All right, so starting out, we're going to click and drag custom shape until it's somewhere over the middle, and then bring it out. Click to apply, and we are done. And with that, I would like to thank you all for tuning into my TED Talk, and I'll see you guys next time. All right, fine, I'm back. So the video can't be over so fast, but let's go ahead and just continue playing with this. So as you saw, I was able to drag in a custom shape pretty easily and get this cut going. However, we do have a little bit of uh, artifacting going on here. So let's see if there's something we can do to actually ease its pain. In fact, let's use the uh, classic clean mesh, still causing a little bit of pain here. Let's look at it from top view and I will actually use the knife tool. Press K, C, E to make a new one. Press enter and this will allow me to cut all the way through. And then from here, whenever I run clean mesh, we get a much cleaner result here. So once it shows back up, now we have the geometry looking a little bit better. But that's actually my fault that uh, at the time I was making the custom insert that you're seeing here. Um, turn off automatic keyframing. Um, you can see that the geometry in here just wasn't the cleanest. So in preparation of this video, I probably could have done a better job. However, now that we have a little bit of um, cleanup going here, in fact, if we turn on wireframe, we can kind of see what we have here. And let's see sharp it to jump it up to the next level. And of course the mesh is just unviewable until we lower the be with down to something a little more reasonable. And now we can see what we're actually dealing with here. However, um, I do want to make sure I'm under angle and I want to make sure that I turn my uh, bevel to angle as well. Maybe even lower it to 20 in this case, just to make sure that it shades correctly. In fact, if we turn off overlays, we can get a quick look at what we have here so far. So the main purpose of this tutorial actually wasn't even to show box cutter. It's really just to get in here and just play with a little bit of decal machine. <clears throat> now that it's back in 2.8, um, playing with it on level slices is something I have quite a bit of fun with. So if we look at this in a render, we can see that it's not looking bad with my random shader. So one thing I do like doing now is actually disconnecting the uh, random roughness and setting it myself because I'll get something a little more reasonable. So, and also now that we've um, applied everything as far as C-sharp goes, we should be able to separate this by loose parts, but we don't have any because everything is manifold um, as of the way that this insert was created. So we'll look at it from the side and we'll just start doing a couple of slices. Of course, turn overlays back on. Use classic and gone. We'll press X, bring it through to the other side. Now this piece is a new piece. And if we look at it in the render, you'll see that they um, receive a different color a separation so we'll just get in there do a couple of quick separations nothing major do one more here and I could just laser cut but sometimes I just like to walk the extrusion across the field like I always say old habits die hard sometimes even after making a uh, better way to do something I'll still default to a older less effective way of doing it just because of habits so we'll just cut through here press X to convert to a slice and we also don't need um, wireframe to be showing in this case however we do have a little bit of artifacting here where we hotlined just a little bit and we can actually fix this by taking this piece and just moving it out. You know, usually hot lines are caused by areas of geometry just too close together. Right here, uh, we can actually solve this with the knife tool. 
uh, could use blue box. However, knife tool is also just as reliable. So we'll just dissolve some of these edges that are coming in here. And you can see that that improves the quality of life here. And so for this area down here, um, I'll actually go into box cutter and let's just try a knife box. Old time's sake, let's just cut and dream. So that is our cut. We'll dissolve that. There's interior faces here. Which can sometimes happen using it. Um, that's what I meant whenever I said Boolean rules apply. Is sometimes the blue box will um, perform a little strange. However, as you can see, it is quite easy to uh, notice and clean that sort of stuff up. And this is something that we also are working on improving in the future. So now that we're in cut mode, uh, let's make sure we're in red box. We'll go over here for select box. We'll just do a couple of little box cuts, maybe even mirror it to the other side on all pieces, just to keep things simple. Just a little tick here and there, you know, random extrusion. So here we go. We have our corridor. We look at it render. We see that we lost our material somehow probably a byproduct of using the booleans. All of them have now been reassigned the same shader. So now we can actually get in and begin. Um, we worked together with Decal Machine to ensure that um, the D button works with both box cutter and hard ops. So if you press the D button, you can bring up his pie menu, which you can um, go through and use a variety of different inserts that he has. Uh, decal machine is one of my favorite tools, especially because it's such a nice ending on top of the pipeline with working with hard ops, in my opinion. Um, you get in, do what's real, you know, with box cutter, land it on thick, and then finally at the end, use some decals to just ham it up. Just put that little extra pizzazz on your render, so that way you don't have to go in and, and mess with all this stuff geometrically, which can... Uh, sometimes become tedious um, You know sometimes messing with the bevel modifier so much is um, is a risky proposition and You have it at the amount that you want so you only want to Just add a couple of uh, just tertiary things just to make your scene have more excitement you know that is where this tool comes in and so for me and being a guy who loves to make robots, adding that extra layer is just everything to me. So as I get on with this, you know, these are things that I would normally be uh, cutting in circles and placing inserts and doing things like that. But the ability to fake it is also something quite, quite amazing. In fact, I will go under this one and choose relationship lines to turn that off. And we'll just keep pasting our bolts. We'll select all three of these and this, and we'll press Alt X to mirror them across. And so when it comes to my personal usage of decal machine, I just like to place decals, duplicate them, reuse them. You know, one good decal deserves 18 more, more duplications of it on the surface. And you can see that this is you know, probably the fastest and easiest part of the whole pipeline for me. And the cool thing with Decal Machine, of course, is you can atlas these to export to Unity or um, Unreal or Substance Painter. And it extends far beyond just being able to place. In fact, I'm looking for my favorite decal. My favorite decal has to be here. Uh, machine Made, you think that would, would be it, but no, there's one more. Here we go, it's this cube. I love using this cube. Just let people know, this thing started from a cube. And then I'll go in, play with the metallic, and give it a metallic cube. So that way people just know this was born of the cube. In fact, uh, we look at this and I see that, you know, we probably need a little bit of box cutter 
just a little bit alt w to start and we'll just draw this press x just to separate that out and you know i'm going to use kit ops right here uh, in kit ops i have a uh, material pack up and working on and the cool thing is if you hover over this it'll tell you what it does i'm going to hold control i'm just going to assign this material and i'm also going to save this scene as 712 horrid demo and that's because if i go into a render and i let it play it's possibly going to crash because of drivers but if it doesn't then this is the result i get i get my pulsing light so i get to continue on with my life and so getting back to my decals in fact we can um x out box cutter and there should be a v match for making these materials also match their underlying ones like you see here and it looks like machine has made this even more interactive than it was previously so i can change the colors to actually match the shaders that are underneath so really amazing stuff here um you know at the time that he was working on it he kept telling me to you know start using it and i was telling him i was like you know i, I want to be surprised when i do a demo on it and um you know color me surprised um however i was surprised anyways just surprised that it continues on you know 2.8 is um so difficult sometimes um, there's a lot of things that change on the regular that can really wreck things up um the latest release 712 was actually ready quite a while ago and as a result of things changing within blender 2.8 itself it did make things very difficult we had to make some compromises a lot of things ended up on the cutting room floor you know i like i love that saying now because now i know what it means because every release is like wow so many ideas i, I said we're not releasing without you know we ended up having a release without but that is what um, updates are for so we definitely plan on coming back with um, more utility updates to bring some of the quality of life things to uh, make these latest features uh, easier to use and a funner time while also brainstorming ways to um, work with curvature so for me I use snapping somewhat sparingly uh, you know there's there's two behaviors whenever I tell it to people there's always on snapping which is crazy people um, or or retopology or there's um, holding control to snap and so in this case I'm using the hold control to snap even though um, with 2.8 it seems like the alignment of things whenever I duplicate them sometimes gets a little bit weird also got to add that I'm working on a NUC uh, which is like a really micro computer um, my main computer died long story but yeah I'm working on a NUC now and the fact that this NUC lets me work in rendered mode and plop these decals down, indicating all this detail just for the sake of making a nice render for you guys. Um, just, just amazing. Uh, you know, 2.8 is getting better and better. Uh, the majority of my crashes actually come only from playing with drivers. Um, other than that, everything's great. But, you know, if you're a dev out there, Boy, I, I sure have some issues with drivers. I'll paste them sometimes and things will just get so strange. But I do want to play with drivers. That's my thing now. So uh, looking at some of these decals, I realized this one might be backwards. So there we go. And continuing on. We'll keep going under the examples. These are my favorite decals. I mean, we'll just look at them. Um, this one right here. You know, when 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 machine starts turning these back into geometry, you know, we'll have to have a wood. But um, we do look forward to hopefully integrating box cutter with decal machine in the future, so that uh, users can draw decals with box cutter tools and have tools that kind of. Uh, 
combo them both. You know, a um, big part of our tools is um, being able to collaborate and work with others and make interesting results out of um, different combinations. Right here, I'm just going to change the shader. I guess not. I guess that's as good as it gets. So we look at this, and this thing is on its way. I mean, once we put the lights on, this thing's done. So we stick a fork in that, and I'm just gonna move decals into my main collection. I actually didn't know this before. And so these two collections actually don't need. However, if I remove them, um, catastrophe will befall the world. So let's not do that. But now that I'm uh, looking at everything, including the grid floor, let's just make a new scene. I mean, a new collection. This is now layer two. And in this collection, we're just gonna insert collection one, Alt G. And we'll, let's go to layer one. And we'll just move this to cutters. We don't need that no more. Go back to layer two. Now it's clean. So Shift D, Y. And we're still on face, so we wanna change this to increment. Because we started from a cube, it'll be G, Y, holding control, R, Z, nine, zero, and it'll just snap. We shift D, control, select all four, shift D, hold control, shift D, press X, hold control, and so on. So this is just for the purposes of making a little, uh, you know, way to look at this in the end as an environment instead of a, uh, just a wall slice. But wall slices to me are the new kiosks. You know, back in the day I used to do just a ton of kiosks, but now wall slices are my thing. However, I do like to uh, spread these out and put things in between, maybe replace the second wall with something looking out in the, other, in the outside world. But instead of talking forever, let me just put the render on. And we'll just look at that. So this, this, the main tutorial of this was, you know, 20 minutes. It's 20 minutes of me goofing off, playing with box cutter decal machine. I do want to come back and do a video actually talking more about custom cutters and what I plan to do with them and show off some of the custom cutters that we've made over the course of uh, box cutter 712. Uh, if you're part of the discord or the Facebook group, I did make a post sharing them where you should be able to insert corridors and make them very quickly. Um, but the goal was to show that you know, corridors are almost trivial now, so now it's time to make entire spaceships. But I just wanted to do just a quick video, maybe a joke, just to also give a shout out to Decal Machine and congratulate him on his most recent release. And I hope that you guys see enough value in this that you go and pick up the product. So with that, I'll see you guys next time.